There you are. So I've done this before, but I was unplugged, and apparently I didn't explain it very well. So <clears throat> let's do this again. First off, there's a the scale pad. That one. color-coded with the connector scale, the minor scale, and the major scale. Now the major scale is just the major scale. I didn't change any of that. The only alteration I've done is to the minor scale in order to make everything fit together and flow better. Now I'll explain it this time. <clears throat> First let's do the minor scale and I'll show you how these link up and why I do it the way I do it. Now so minor scale, um, actually let's go to note, I'm playing A minor C major. All right. These fret numbers only apply to this. Any other time you want to move the scale, the pattern's the exact same, but obviously if you're playing D minor, you're not playing the fifth fret, right? On the minor. That that's gonna be your connector scale. Actually that'll be the end of your major. Anyway, so for A minor, we've got 578, 578, 57. I know, I'll explain. Come back, drop back, so it's Four, five, seven, five, six, eight, five, seven, eight. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand that's a little different, and it doesn't flow very well down, and it'll it'll take you like a day to learn. All right. The payoff comes later on. That I'll explain. So we've got that minor. Your major is C major. Major minor. Minor, major. <laughs> so A minor, C major. G minor, A sharp major. D minor, F major. That's how it always works. All right. So we're at C major. So C major is where are we at? Eighth fret. So it's 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 13. Now that's just a normal major scale. What this does is your minor scale, the top th two strings overlap the first note. So where you're ending on your minor, you're beginning on your major. On both of these. Right? Now, when I do the two notes, from there on down, you're always two frets away from your major. Even when you shift back. And then on the bottom four strings there's always two frets between your major and your minor the top two strings overlap now the connector scale matters because it comes right after your major to get you back to your minor if you're playing in D minor what the hell are you playing right here your D minor goes straight down so what the hell are you gonna play here that's your connector scale so your connector scale starts at the last note we played on the major. The first note of your connector is always the last note of your major. You don't have to worry about frets there. So you've got, no, fret numbers. <laughs> 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 15. From here on these bottom, your thinner strings, the bottom three strings, it's always a stretch. So we're going 12, 14, 16. Then coming up to 13, because that's where we ended on these bottom two strings. 13, 15, 17. 13, 15, 17. Now, so your major to your connection is always wherever you ended off with that major, that's where your connection starts. It always it overlaps all the way down. Now, here's the second octave of your A. So on the top three strings, we're ending on the G. The top string is on the G, but that fret. All right. And we are always two frets away from your minor on the top three strings. The bottom three strings, where you're stretching, they always overlap. That's why I do these two strings and then drop it back. Because that not only keeps us along the two fret rule, the major, but also 
it allows these bottom three strings to overlap your connection string. Because 12th fret, open string, same thing, right? So your connection scale down here would be right there you get it so here's your a so you can see that i'm playing two frets away on these top three strings because this is where i did the two starts there now the G strings where I drop back, and that is also where you start stretching. Okay. I understand it's a little confusing. But once you memorize these three scales, from then on, no matter where you're at, you always know where you're going. <laughs> because two frets, two frets, two frets, that's it. And if you want to go all the way back to your major, well, you're at your minor now, so, well, that's your connection scale, but that's also the end of your major. This connection scale matters because if you're playing a D minor, and you're coming down, and you want to drop back to your major, you're at your major. Right? Because that connector on those bottom three strings overlaps. So you've only got one note to worry about between your minor and your major. how easy it should be it should just flow for you <laughs> so from your connector top three strings two frets away from your minor the bottom three strings overlap your minor from your minor the top two strings overlap your major the bottom four strings two frets away from your major from your major to your connector they all overlap that's how easy it is and if you want to if you decide you want to learn other scales by all means but if you decide you want to learn the minor octave scale yeah. uh, look at the chart every one of those notes are in the scales I gave you if you want the A minor pentatonic they're all in there it, it's all there the major pentatonic they're all in the scale I gave you. All of these scales are based off the, off the natural scale. The only time that you have to change this up is if you want to play the melodic scale or the harmonic scale or something like that. And even then, memorize these scales and get it to where you can move it. Do, do, do what I do. If you memorize this scale pattern, download Guitar, Jack, uh, Guitar Jam All Styles on your phone. It's a crap load of backing tracks. Then just sort it by whatever except key and pull it up on your phone just spin and tap play freaking backing track roulette land on a random key random backing track and then play in that key just move your scale to d flat minor or d minor or g minor or freaking e major or whatever <clears throat> and then play that backing track until you've got this down once you do, and you don't really have to think too much about it, then start changing it up. You want to play the melodic scale? That's based off the major. So it's the flat third. So you've got, in C major, you've got one, two, three. So flatten that third. Instead of playing E, we're going to play D sharp. And you'll be 
doing that, what, three times here? Just hear the C, and then C, D, D sharp, F, G, A, B, C. All right, C's one, C, D, E. Well, we flatten that, so now you're doing... third so that's a major scale this is a melodic scale you just flatten that third and bring it back and you keep doing that for all the scales just change all of your E's to D sharps it's that easy you're changing like nine notes in the entire along the entire fretboard and doing it by scale so that you're not so that you're not trying to map out the entire damn fretboard. Alright, if you want to play harmonic, build your melodic scale, get a feel for it, then flatten the sixth, and you've got the harmonic scale. Everything is based off the natural scale, and that's what I just gave you is the entire natural scale. And whatever key you want, doesn't matter. All of these mini little Learn these five scale patterns for the cage scale system. They're, they're all in there. And instead of losing three or four notes per pattern, you, you got all the notes. <laughs> There's no reason to learn five different damn scale patterns just because they're a little bit smaller. Because then when you're trying to move back and forth up the neck and link them up, you're making it a lot harder on yourself. Whereas if you just take the time in the beginning to learn those three scale patterns then they link up the linkage is simplistic and that's what really matters is playing the guitar not learning individual scale patterns and trying to make something out of it because you'll never be satisfied trying to run through the damn pentatonic scale and then learn one other scale and try and make something out of it that's never gonna get you <laughs> where you want to be the whole neck is the only way to go and learning those three scale patterns remembering the two fret rules That'll become second nature in no time once you start playing the backing track. You, you'll have it pretty quick. That's why I do it the way I do it. Alright? Questions? Give it a shot.